Stem cell therapy is very attractive for diseases like multiple sclerosis because on the one hand administration of certain types of stem cells has already been shown to inhibit pathological immune responses. On the other hand, stem cell therapy offers the possibility of repairing what already has been damaged. So, we're going to discuss today a brand new paper which used human stem cells in the mouse model of multiple sclerosis. The investigators used two types of animal models. The first one is a chronic progressive in which the disease severity increases with time. This model involves taking a B6 mouse and injecting the mouse with myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein derived peptide, MAG peptide. So when you inject the mouse with this peptide, the mouse's immune response starts attacking the myelin sheath and you have a disease that resembles MS. The second model is a relapse remitting model in which SJL mice, it's another type of mice, are injected with peptides derived from proteolipid protein, another antigen, another protein that's found in the myelin. So in this publication, the authors actually, as a therapeutic intervention, used human bone marrow derived mesenchymal stem cells, which were injected 3 million of them into the tail vein. Now, the important part, one of the important parts of this whole publication uh, and understanding it is understanding how you grade the response or the disease severity in the mouse. So, how do you know if the mouse has MS and how do you know if your treatment worked? So, they use, the investigators use a conventional scale, which is from 0 to 5. 0 is no disease. 1 is the tail does not move of the mouse. 2 is the hind limbs uh, are slow or partially paralyzed. 3 is the hind limbs are completely paralyzed. 4 is the forelimbs and the hind limbs are paralyzed. And 5 is death. So that's the severity scale. Now, if we turn to the first figure, um, you can see on the, the severity scale, which is on the y-axis, you can see that in the green, um, this is the mice that were immunized with the MAG peptide, and you can see how progressively with time, the disease becomes worse. That's the green. If you look now in the red, the red, the red lines are the mice that received mesenchymal stem cells at day 16. As you can see, the disease severity went up, and then after receiving the mesenchymal stem cells, it started to go down. If you give the mesenchymal stem cells at 26 days after the disease started, which you can see here in the blue, you can also see that the, that the disease was down after administration. Now, that was the chronic progressive model. Let's look now if you give the mesenchymal stem cells in the relapse remitting model. As you can see in this figure, that the controls had uh, increased relapses, whereas the ones that received the mesenchymal stem cells did not. Very interestingly, in this publication, they did use some control experiments using human HeLa cells, because one of the big questions is you want to make sure that it's not just some kind of strange, non-specific effect of putting a human cell in a mouse that is blocking the MS in the mouse. Now, how is this working? How are these mesenchymal stem cells inhibiting the disease progression? One way is that they inhibit the infiltration of lymphocytes into the central nervous system. As you can see in this figure, the red cells are CD45 positive lymphocytes that are attacking. So there's less immunological attack. If you look at myelination, um, you can stain the mouse, the mouse's the cervical spine, with the dye. Luxol blue, and as you can see in the top panel, in control mice that have not been induced with a MS like disease, there is a lot of blue, there's a lot of myelination. When you have the MS like disease, EAE it's called, when the animal is, um, is having this autoimmune attack against the myelin, you can see a lot less myelin. And then when you give the stem cells, you can see a lot more myelin. This was associated with reduction in the lesion size in the, in, in the CNS lesion as well as a restoration of the number of axons. Now, perhaps one of the more interesting things, which I really liked about this paper, is that they actually looked at cells in the central nervous system, 
to see if there's more oligodendrocytes. So oligodendrocytes, these are the cells that make myelin. And as you can see in this figure, there's in vivo an increased number of oligodendrocyte cells and in vitro, when you uh, grow neurospheres, there are more oligodendrocytes. So this is telling us that the mesenchymal stem cell administration seem to be inducing this shift, a local shift, in the regenerative oligodendrocytes which go and make new myelin. Now, the other interesting thing is when you take out immune cells from these mice, you can see in the control mice, as opposed to the treated mice, the control mice make a lot more interleukin-2, interferon gamma, and interleukin-17 upon recall. These are inflammatory Th1 cytokines, whereas the uh, mice that receive the mesenchymal stem cells make less. This is the same for interleukin-12 and TNF-alpha, and the anti-inflammatory or Th2 cytokines, interleukin-4 and interleukin-5, seem to be increased. So. This was a very interesting publication, at least from my point of view, as an immunologist, because they're using human cells in a mouse, in a mouse that is immune competent, that has an autoimmune disease. So why is this important? Obviously this is important because when you're trying to evaluate human stem cells, you can usually evaluate human stem cells in diseases that don't involve the immune system in the mouse. For example, you can put a human stem cell in a mouse that has a heart attack and you give the mouse immune suppression so that the immune system doesn't interfere with the human cells put in. Problem with immunological conditions such as multiple sclerosis is if you put in the human cells in the mouse you'd be afraid of rejection and then even if rejection doesn't occur which it didn't seem to be occurring in this paper actually you can see this slide right now this is the mesenchymal stem cells in the CNS of the mouse, the human cells in the mouse. So the cells stayed it. However, one would always be afraid of the immune cross reactivity or the stem cells, the human cells in the mouse actually making the disease worse. But that didn't happen in this situation with the mesenchymal stem cells. So this paper is very interesting because on the one hand, it teaches us that it is acceptable to be assessing human cells in animal models of autoimmunity. It is the first time somebody has done this, to my knowledge. The second thing it teaches us is that the mesenchymal stem cells can help regeneration through increasing the number of oligodendrocytes. And number three, this study confirms what other studies have published before, which is different types of mesenchymal stem cells have activity against animal models of multiple sclerosis. Thank you very much.